Today on the channel from the Super 7 Ultimates line and Conan the Barbarian, we've got Demigod Serpent, Thulsa Doom. Welcome everyone, Kyle here, and welcome back to the channel for another Super 7 Ultimates unboxing and review. And today, from the Conan the Barbarian line, we've got the Demigod Serpent, Thulsa Doom. Old James Earl Jones himself and Conan the Barbarian, an 80s staple. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, of course, the star as Conan. And we're going to be unboxing the Arnold Super 7 as well, so stay tuned for that video. Make sure you check that one out as well. But I'm all in on these two, at least. I didn't pick up the prior versions of the Super 7 Ultimates. I don't know if there was enough meat on the bone. I don't know if I like the quality on those so much. But you guys know me. I love a snake god. I say it all the, all the time on the channel. I love hairy bipedal creatures. I love face paint. I love masks. And I love serpent gods. Well, maybe not so much. But this looks awfully interesting. Enough to be dangerous. Enough to warrant a spot at my table and a spot in my collection, at least for now. So I did pick these bad boys up. And of course, you can get all your Super 7 Ultimates and a whole lot more at Big Bad Toy Store. Link in the description below. But we're going to do this like we do all the other ones on the channel. We're going to take a look at the packaging. We're going to talk about it. We're going to unbox it. We're going to talk about it. We're going to see where it goes from there. So let's take a look first at the cardboard cover, the hard cardboard box these Super 7 Ultimates come in right there. Pretty plain Jane, but we do like these. And I always say we got to save the packaging on these. You get Conan the Barbarian, a Demigod Serpent. Thulsa Doom right there. So there it is. See you later. Off to the side. Now we get down to the old brass tacks. We get down to the normal packaging. And I love the serpent skin feel and the serpent skin look to the outside packaging here on Thulsa Doom. Very, very interesting right there. Very, very cool. Uh, right on the front says Conan the Barbarian. Dermagod Serpent Th Thulsa Doom right there. Then on the back you got a little bit of his... Um, his sword, his little snake sword or snake knife, whatever we want to call it. Very cool insignia kind of put into the packaging there. Very, very solid packaging. Work of art with this packaging right here. Slide this bad boy off like all the other ultimates we do. Give it the old to the side. See you later. There it is. And Thulsa Doom is ready to party. Oh, yeah. Snake Man ready to party, of course. We got James Earl Jones leading the charge right there. Uh, very interesting. I always thought even as a kid, I was like, eh, James Earl Jones kind of weird. And I didn't know who really James Earl Jones was. Uh, obviously, I knew, hey, there's the voice of Darth Vader. I could tell that as a kid. Uh, but it just seemed weird. He didn't seem like a, didn't seem like a real, real fit for this role, at least. But I guess he did a fair enough job. He's remembered all these years later. And hey, here we are, 2022, and he is getting an action figure. But it just always felt weird, especially when he had this long like black hair. It just looked very strange, and it still looks a little strange to this day, because I don't think James Earl Jones ever really had long hair in, in real life, just for the movies. Just always struck me funny. Maybe I'm just weird. Who knows? Uh, but a lot of accessories in there. we got extra heads going on. Nice ceremonial robe, all that kind of fun stuff. We got Conan the Barbarian, all that right there. Kind of see the sides, nothing really going on there. we got a little bit of blurb on the back of the packaging, of course, and I will read that bad boy, so give me a second here, and let's do it. Let's read it. Let's see what's going on with the Demigod Serpent, Thulsa Doom. As Thulsa Doom spectates his harem. Spectates? Yeah, spectates his harem. And cannibalistic followers from within the Mountain of Power, he reveals his secret to longevity. He is not human. Uh-oh, dun-dun-dun. But instead, a demon god spawn of the dark god set. As Thulsa transforms into a snake before his congregation, Conan and his friends suddenly strike from the shadows. Many of Thulsa's men are killed, but Thulsa is able to kill Valera with a serpent arrow during their attempt to escape the mountain. And if you were a kid of the 80s, you know nothing was more deadly than a serpent's arrow. As we saw this, of course, in this movie. But we'll never forget the G.I. Joe animated classic, the animated movie, where Serpentor gets that snake and bam, right into the heart of Duke. Kills Duke, of course, but then uh, it was changed because of the blowback from the Optimus Prime thing. So they brought Duke back to life, but really he was supposed to die there. So, you know, if you get hit with a serpent's arrow... Game over. Game over, pal. That's the way it goes. So there it is. There's the packaging. There's the fun. Let me unbox this, get the twist ties, all that kind of fun stuff we have to do with normal ultimates. And we'll be back with Thulsa Doom. 
All right, and we're back, and we got Fulsa of Doom out of the package, got the twist tie off, and we got just enough to show the old plastic prison, a staple of the channel. Love the plastic prison, and there's Fulsa of Doom. Now we got to knock all this stuff out, and he has got a lot, a lot of things going on here. I have never seen so many hands. Oh, what am I saying? I've seen so many hands, but he's got a lot of hands, and you guys know uh, we just need a lot of hands. Why wouldn't you? You need to get him in all kinds of different powerful poses. So we got every hand under the sun about uh, ready for him there. So very, very cool. Pop him out. Maybe. Whoa, that was dangerous. That was dangerous. See you later off to the side. See you later. There's that back kind of lava background there off to the side. See you later. Now we get down to it. Let's get down to what is going on here. The weapons, the accessories, and let's be honest, the fun. The fun of having James Earl Jones right here at your desk. Uh, just what a, what a time to be alive with James Earl Jones. So there it is right there. Okay, let's get down to the hands here. And now we've seen hands a million times, and this is going to be no different. Uh, what do we got? We got two fisted hands. Oh, false of doom. You never know when he's going to throw down with some knuckles. Uh, so he's got his two fisted hands here. We've seen things like that before. Uh, then we get gripping hands, and we get uh, different. Yep, it is exactly what I thought. So we get gripping hands, the exact same hand. One hinge goes this way, one goes the other way. It's just uh, very, very, you know, side to side or up and down. How do you want your hinge to go? Choose your own hinge-handed adventure on your grasping hands. So we got the hands out of the way. Now we get down to the accessories. Now we saw that ornate packaging. We saw that uh, kind of snake uh, sword. I guess it's not really a sword. It's more of a dagger or a knife. So we got that right here. Nice silver color to it. You got a nice brown handle. And then you get down to it and you get the little serpents intertwined here. Very something a serpent god would have for sure. Uh, so he's got the serpent knife. Yeah, dagger, whatever we want to call it. He's got that going on right there. Then we get down to some bow and arrow action. Like we're a young Robin Hood Prince of Thieves here. But we got uh, the real arrow going on or the real, uh, what do we call this thing? The, the string, the string, the bow, the bow and the string. Uh, but it's a real string right here. It's got some extra, extra action work there to it. Nice brown once again with nice gold accents throughout. Very, very cool. Very solid. And then you got his arrows. And like I said, beware the snake arrows. Uh, just very, very dangerous here with this snake just flying through the air. Very, very cool. This reminds me a whole lot of G.I. Joe the movie, which I talked about earlier. It just reminds me of Serpentor getting that snake straightened and bam, just like that. That's what this looks like. So it's an arrow of a snake. The snake has his mouth open, which is really cool. He does have a little bit of fangs there, but I think the only thing I'd say is make the fangs even a little bit bigger on this. The more deadly the fangs, the better. Uh, that's how I view and that's how I sit, as you guys know right here at the table. But good looks, it definitely looks like a snake, so you know what you're getting right there for sure. Then we get down to some snake heads. Oh, watch out for the snake heads. Uh, so this is very, 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 oh, even cooler than I thought. Even cooler than I thought. So now this snake head here, uh, obviously he does turn into a serpent. Yeah, it's his powers. It's his powers. Uh, but you can pop this serpent head on if you don't want the James Earl Jones head. I'm not sure where I'm going to go, but I'm leaning towards serpent. I, he got it. It looks crazy and zany enough. Uh, very snake skin. Looks a lot like the arrow, of course. Got that tan and brown. Then you got the reptilian. Reptilian? Yeah, we'll call them snake eyes. He's got the old snake eyes. No G.I. Joe pun intended. And then he's got his uh, ornate hood over the top of it. Man, what a regal looking serpent we got right here. But what I didn't know until I got this in hand is the mouth has articulation. You can open that mouth wide. See that deadly pink inside. See all those teeth in there. Ugly. Just ugly, but awesome for a shelf. Very, very cool. We got a little piece of tape inside there for some reason. Gonna yank that out and put that off to the side. There it is. Uh, so very, very cool head. And then you got, like I said, he's got his hood over here. He's very ornate, silver, red, the black. Uh, very good look to this uh, hood. So we got that. Then we got it when he turns into the full snake. This is a little strange, but it's like this went down to the ground. Now he's a snake, and there's the hood, everything over him. I guess this is an okay decor piece off to the side uh, you could do if you're so inclined. Uh, but yeah, just a nice another little accessory here. So some good weapons, some good accessories, all the hands you could want, an extra head to die for. But how is the figure? How is James Earl Jones going to be? Well, let's find out. Let's take a look at him here. And the first thing you notice, he's got his ornate robe. He is ready to go. He's got his fanciest of robes on. Uh, yeah, he's got his flip-flops as well because he gets hot. Serpents like it hot, so they're going to wear their flip-flops for sure. He's got his kind of running man hands like he's getting ready to do the robot or something. He's got some of that going on. 
Uh, very, very interesting hands. I don't think I'm going to use these hands. I don't know. I, I got to figure it out. We'll see it in some of the glamour shots which hands I like the best. I mean, he's got to hold some of these weapons at least, I think. Uh, so we got that going there, uh, the hands. But then you get the beautiful kind of robe, and it's almost like a leathery uh, feel to it, I guess. Uh, it's not leather, I'm sure, but like a plasticky leather. I uh, got nice straps over the side that go over each other. Got a nice gold necklace going here that is uh, goods that are not put into the figure. It is a loose necklace, so that does look good as well. Got the head on him. It's the same kind of head as the serpent, uh, same ornate design to it and the black hood on the back and things we look at james earl jones head and i gotta say you know my biggest gripe with human figures from the super seven line we see it with the wrestling figures especially i really noticed it on the prior coney and the barbarian figures and that was one of the reasons i passed i may go back one day and pick those up but i passed because too much of a high gloss on the face it was just way too glossy of a face this seems to be dumbed down a lot on this one. It it still has that shine to it, but it's not that deep, like, fake mannequin gloss to it, uh, as we've seen with some other Super 7s. I don't know if I just got lucky with mine, but it definitely looks a little bit better on this one for sure. It looks good. And then he's got a kind of an overlay piece with, uh, it looks like something my daughters would crochet. They're, they're working trying to be crochet masters currently, and this almost looks like something they would make. Uh, it's kind of the ornate robe on the back end, but it hangs down. It's almost like something your grandma would crochet for you. Uh, you got go that going on. Then you get a very cool reptilian uh, snake belt. I think he's the reptilian heavyweight champion of the world, so I think he wears that with pride. Uh, I am not going to take this outfit off. I don't think there's really a reason to. And this belt is not going to go off. It looks like it's kind of stuck in there. Underneath, we got underneath the robe. Uh, if you ever want to see what James Earl Jones is wearing under his robe, now's your chance. Uh, it looks just like a little bit of armor, kind of a gladiator uh, flaps going on right there. Got nice silver around the boots. And they're not even boots. They're really slipper sandals going on. But he's got the wrapping, and then you got some ornate uh, gray silver in there some nice uh, built-in decor on the body of course but the robe is what it's about that's how he's gonna stay he's gonna be the serpent in the robe or he's gonna be the james earl jones in the robe we'll figure out one way or the other i'm sure he's gonna fit on a ringside collectible stand why wouldn't he not of course he fits right there like a glove on the ringside stand you gotta have him on a stand these are pricey figures as you guys know around 50 dollars. so you want to be careful you don't want these guys doing a dive off your shelf unless you can afford it. None of us can. Uh, but it does look very good. This actually beat my expectations. This is kind of a last minute pull of the strings. I did not pre-order this. I just ordered open stock. Uh, but this is a very, very cool Fulsa Dome. I don't know how deep I'm going to go in the Conan lore. I guess we'll see. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. But he looks really good. How about a little bit of comparisons for him? Uh, some of the other ones. Of course, uh, Conan always reminded me a little bit of He-Man, kind of the same universe. And I'll take him off the stand for the comparison so you can really see the height going on. But we got He-Man, of course, once again, a uh, little Masters Universe Classics He-Man right here. See how those guys scale together. And then, of course, you got to have a classic Snake Man. we got the Hiss, uh, King Hiss, I should say, from Masters of the Universe. There he is. They stand right there. And when you're talking some of the greatest uh, Snake Men of all time, you really can't forget about, of course, old Jake the Snake Roberts. Yes, of course. we got all the Snake Men here today, but we got Jake the Snake Roberts. Looking only like Jake could look if he was in a full Doom review. There you go. Looks good. A scaling all is pretty well right here. Put that there. And then, of course, you have to compare James Earl Jones to James Earl Jones as Darth Vader. What is the more iconic role? I think it's Darth Vader all day long. But James Earl Jones, kind of getting a figure. I count this as James Earl Jones, even though it's only the voice, not the body. But you know what? The voice is half the battle at the end of the day, isn't it? Yeah, sure. Sounds good. But we've got a little comparisons here. I don't think this is uh, too bad, actually. This actually beat my expectations. And we'll see. I'll play around with it, have some time with it. We'll have some good glamour shots throughout the videos, we always do. But it's pretty solid for a Super 7 Ultimates. And it does look a heck of a lot better than the faces in the prior set of Conan the Barbarian figures. Uh, but we'll see. I still got to open up uh, Arnold. Uh, Conan himself will do that here on the channel, so stay tuned for that. But what's your thoughts on Thulsa Doom? What's your thoughts on Conan the Barbarian? Leave your comments in the comment section down below, of course. Don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to thumbs up this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Follow along on Patreon so you can get videos early, much earlier than the traditional YouTube channel, and plus giveaways, all kinds of other stuff on the Patreon. Link in the description below. Hit me up on social media and follow along at SirPaul64 on Twitter. 
Instagram, the underscore Kyle underscore Peterson, and ProWrestlingTees.com, search Kyle Peterson. So for Thulsa Doom and the Super 7 Ultimate line, I'm Kyle. See you guys all real soon.